Hey guys, Jeremy here with KISS Aquatic Systems. K-I-S-S, -S. keep it simple, stupid. So my koi pond here and uh, my filtration has been infested with freshwater sponges. Kind of cool, uh, don't know exactly what they are. My guess is Spongilla lacustra. Uh, let's take a look at them. Hey, these are the fish. They're, of course, begging for food. But this video is not about them, it's about sponges. So, here's one of them. You can see right here. Kind of try to get it not blurry. Growing at the edge of the pond. Um, there we go underneath and to the side of a rock. So you can sort of see this is a white sponge, so it doesn't look like there's smush or any photosynthetic uh, symbiotic algae living in here. You see the ostea and the oscula, the, uh, the smaller holes are where the water likely comes in. I'm not even sure you can see those. And the larger holes are where the water exits. Hey buddy. <laughs> so sponges, as we all know, are our filter feeders. They filter out organic matter and small plankton. These fish really want to get fed. Um, and uh, usually they're considered a sign of good water quality, which is great. However, I'm a little bit suspicious about these sponges because this year in particular, I've had uh, a few more problems than usual with some of my gravity lines clogging up. I suspect some of these sponges may have something to do with that. So let's go. I have a lot more sponges in my uh, biofilter actually, which is a glorified way of saying it's a stock tank. Um, so let's see here we have a lot more sponges. We'll go take a look. And also in the upper pond, we have a ton of bigger ones. So you can see here, uh, these white clumps are sponges. And there are other sponges that are encrusting on the walls that you can see in here. So those white circles are the same sponges a little further down. I can't get the same kind of clarity that I got the one on the koi pond. So yeah, these sponges, they both encrust and they clump on vertical surfaces, which is another reason why I sort of suspect this is Spongilla lacustra. They tend to stay fairly small and uh, again, clearly no symbiotic algae. You can see the white clumps also growing on some of this other filter media. So let's go back around. I actually have a lot more of these sponges that I think I can get a closer shot of in the uh, upper wildlife pond. So we'll head there now. Say hi again to the fish. Hey guys, I'll feed you guys a little while. Um, yeah, sponges are kind of cool. They, uh, temperate, temperate climates like this, they tend to die back in the fall. They encase some small cells in, in a hard outer covering, gemules, that survive the winter up. Oh, here's a frog. This frog's right here. This frog has no fear of me of any kind. I'm like less than a foot away. Anyway, there's a few smaller sponges you can see right here on these rocks. See if I get a good view of them. Yeah, there's one right, right there. Yeah, it's a great shot. So you can clearly see the texture uh, of the sponge itself. Yeah, so these sponges are encrusting. Um, there's a lot more. There's a huge one I'll show you. 
fairly close by, but let's see how close we can get to this one without getting my phone in the water and ruining it. There we go. So there's a huge one that I've actually started breaking off, unfortunately, uh, back here. Get my finger out of the way. Right here. And uh, take a piece off. This one is everywhere. So this is some of the sponge. Um, it's kind of soft and spongy. So with sponges, the, uh, the spicules, which are the tiny pieces that form the, uh, that cumulatively form the structure in the skeleton are usually either, take it out of the water, uh, silicon based, silicate based or calcium carbonate. Uh, this is probably a silicon based uh, sponge. And the reason I am sort of, oh my God, there's two frogs here. <laughs> the reason I'm guessing that or strongly guessing that is because um, I happen to know for a fact the tap water that I'm using for my weekly water changes does have plenty of silicates in it. And on the other side of that, um, my pond water has fairly low alkalinity, so not a whole lot of calcium carbonate availability. So I got about, I don't know, maybe 80 ppm of alkalinity on this pond on a good day. So this is probably a silicon-based sponge. You can sort of see it. I think this part's already dying because I pulled it off uh, a couple days ago. But yeah, it's a piece. Got some more sponges. We'll go around and see. Try not to step on these frogs. All right, guys, I'm gonna have to come through here. So, you in particular. Uh, yeah, gone. Didn't go far. Just like right here. Sorry, bud. And hello. Okay. Yeah, these water irises got wrecked. Last week we had some very high winds, a bit of a storm. So, another frog. Okay, so some more sponges over here. Uh, that frog made a big mess, but honestly, I'm just gonna throw this away. It's dead. But here you can see the sponge is encrusting and also slightly branching. Again, Spongilla lacustis, lacustis kind of looks like this. Try to get a view without the glare. But I don't know exactly what species this is. If we have any sponge experts here watching this video, which I doubt. Um, great to hear from you in the comments about any ideas about exactly what this species is or could be. I live in the northeastern United States, temperate climate. Yeah, so there's this one, this sponge right here. Fairly large, actually. This one is about, I'd say almost six inches long. Get the leaf out of here. And uh, you can see the texture, slightly branching pattern here as well. This one's about kind of, this one's a little off white. This one's got more of a cream color to it. And uh, there's one underneath, directly underneath, on that other rock that's kind of whiter and more just encrusting. Yep, so we got sponges, folks. Uh, quite a lot of them. And um, yeah, they're filter feeders, so they feed off of organic matter, various kinds of plankton, and uh, help clean out some of the water. I have some other filter feeders in here as well. I have fingernail clamps, which are also quite common. Um, maybe not in koi ponds, but they're quite common. Let me fix this. Man, that storm did a number on some of these plant pots. But yeah, folks, that's it. We got a lot of sponges here. Kind of cool, wasn't really expecting that. Uh, again, this pond is four years old. 
And this is the first time I'm seeing these sponges, which is not really that surprising. Uh, sponges tend to do well in more mature water that does have a mature established colony of, uh, of plankton and a small amount of organics. I'm not sure if you can see, there's a pipe back there where the water actually enters this pond and it's covered in these sponges. I'm gonna see if I get a better shot of them. So they encrust, but they also, they're, they don't lie flat against the surfaces. They pop up a little bit. So you can see here those sponges, um, they're almost like a dome shaped rather than just flat encrusting sponges. Yep, so they're all over the place. So yeah, that's it. Thanks guys. Uh, just want to show you all uh, these sponges. It's kind of cool, kind of surprising. So uh, yeah, anyone who actually knows anything about sponges, which is clearly not me, feel free to reach out and provide some information or context in the comments. I actually would love to learn more about these. And uh, yeah, so that's it guys. Thanks again. Take care, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, happy ponding.